in Men and Their Caves. It's an iconic image echoing down through the ages from the Paleolithic, but even in modern times, men like their caves. Their caves might not be geologically speaking caves anymore, but we still treat them as such. In fact, I'm in my cave right now. Here we are. It's a rainy, drizzly evening in the Pacific Northwest at Milo MacGyver State Park playing some disc golf with me, your pal, Noah Bristol. John Gray wrote a book, and that book was called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. It was a little controversial. It helped a lot of people, but a lot of people took offense that you could classify the emotions and typical behaviors of a person based on their gender. And in the book, John Gray does say that not all men are Martians and not all women are Venusians, but that is the tendency. There can be male Venusians and female Martians, but most of us guys tend to be Martians and we Martians like our caves. Anyway, my lady and I think it's a great book. It's helped us a lot to better understand each other, better communicate. I recommend it. Now I'm gonna describe a relationship pattern that plagues a lot of relationships. And I'm gonna speak specifically to the Venusians in the crowd right now. So imagine you starting to get to know someone new. It's exciting. You can't wait to see each other. There's this electric energy between you when you're together, when you're apart, you're thinking about each other. You can't wait to be back in each other's arms. And you're just looking forward to it continuing to deepen and to it getting to that point where you can marry each other or move in together and just spend all your time together and spend the rest of your lives together. It's just going to be bliss forever and ever. And then you do move in together or you do get married and you are together all the time and it's not bliss. <laughs> And it's not exactly like you imagined. That same energy, that same electricity between you is seeming to fade. What's going on? You thought it was always going to be like it felt in those early days. And your Martian, your man, he seems to be pulling away from you. He's not as loving and affectionate. He's not giving you as much attention or love. And that is hurting you. And you don't want to lose him. So you do what your instincts tell you, which is to ask him questions, get him to try to talk about his feelings. It's to hold on to him tighter, to try to spend more time together, to talk more, to do more things together. But it seems like the more you try to hold on and tighten your clutches and keep him close, the more he's pulling away. What can you do? Are you just doomed? No, you're not doomed. In fact, this is a very common pattern. It doesn't mean that you're not meant for each other. It doesn't mean that you don't love each other anymore. And it doesn't mean that you're not meant to be together forever. John Gray tells us that Martians by nature need this time away from their Venusians. It allows them to process, to regroup, to recharge, to recharge their testosterone as an offset to the oxytocin that's released when they are bonding with you. And then they can come back with energy and with passion into your arms. It's not unusual at all. It's completely normal. It's completely natural. And it's not something to be avoided, but rather embraced and cherished and to be grateful for. The secret that no one has told you about Martians is that men are rubber bands metaphorically rubber bands and i know i know i've got two metaphors going now the cave and the rubber band how do these connect we're gonna get there trust me we'll be okay men by their nature are rubber bands that means that they stretch out and they snap back and when you were first courting each other and dating you'd have time apart you'd have your dates but you lived apart you had separate lives separate friend groups when he wasn't with you he was doing his own thing he was with his friends he was working on his purpose he was reading he was out in nature he was just living his life and a lot of that time maybe he was thinking about you too but he was living his life separately from you and he had the chance to miss you and to ponder the relationship that you had and to get excited to see you again that was him stretching out 
And when he got to see you again, that was him snapping back. And that energy of snapping back to you, that's what allowed him to pour his enthusiasm and his love and his attention into you because he had that time apart to stretch away from you. And then he was able to snap back into your arms. But now that you're living together, you're married, you're spending all your time together, you're maybe working together, you're sharing friend groups, your families are always together, and you're spending all that time together, he doesn't have the opportunity to stretch out. He doesn't have the opportunity to snap back. He's floppy. He's limp. <laughs> He's not able to express the strength and power of his passionate love for you because he's not able to stretch and snap. None of this means that your Martian is getting tired of you or that your relationship is ending. It only means that your Martian needs time in his cave. The cave is not a place for bonding. Once you're there in the cave with your Martian and you're chatting and you're bonding and you're laughing, it's no longer the cave. You've taken away his cave and the more you come into the cave and interrupt the cave time, the longer he'll go, he's going to need to be in the cave in order to have that tension and be able to snap back to you. So what should you do while you're anxiously awaiting him to finish his cave time so he can come back and you can bond again? Well, don't do that. Don't anxiously await his cave time to end. If you do that, then he's going to feel the pressure of your expectation and your waiting, and it's not going to be relaxing for him. He's not going to be able to process and stretch. He's going to be too worried about you because he wants to care for you. He wants you to be happy. That's what Martians want the most is for their Venusians to be happy and for them to contribute to that happiness. So what do you do instead? Go out, have fun, be with your friends, engage with your hobbies, go out in nature, be with your family, do whatever you want to do. You were single before you were in a relationship. What did you do to relax and experience fun and joy when you were single? Go do those things. Your Martian is going to be so happy that you're out there having a good time and just living life and loving life and giving him the opportunity to recharge and live his life and love his life so that you can then come back together, share stories and bond again and enjoy the love that you share together. Oh, probably shouldn't have been holding the camera for that one. What is the cave though? It's not so much a physical place in modern times. It could be, there could be a certain room in his house or the shed he has on this property that he treats as his cave. It's where he goes to be by himself and work on projects and think and contemplate and just recharge his Martianness. <laughs> but more often it's somewhere out in the world and it can be multiple places for different Martians. It could be a disc golf course like this. It could be a mountain biking trail. It can be the pub with friends. It can be the pool hall. It's not so much a place as a state of mind. Usually he's going to be by himself or with other Martians while he's in his cave, recharging his testosterone and his Martianness. So what do you think? Are you a Martian who recognizes yourself and what I've been talking about here? Are you a Venusian whose Martian is always trying to pull away and you're trying to hold on? Or do you think all this is BS? Either way, subscribe if you like playing disc golf with me and pondering life's great topics. I'll see you in the next one.